The Acolyte, Episode 5, is something, and not much of a surprise, because that's right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the big reveal of Darth Twinkus. Alright, so at the end of the last episode, uh, a dozen Jedi got blown off of their feet by what we can only assume, and what everybody has been assuming since the second episode, is discount Ezra Miller uh, being the Sith. Um, if that turns out to be true tonight, it will come as a surprise to absolutely nobody, because the writing in this show has been terrible. <laughs> All right, so we're assuming this guy has, like, a Beskar helmet. He just got whacked in the head. It glanced off of it. Uh, so I, I guess that's what we're going to have a discussion on now. But here's what's... This is the first shot that's more of a close-up. We just had this whole battle sequence. OSHA's point of view, seeing it through the trees. Again, I continue to lament the technical choices in the presentation of this show. This is a show that costs... Over $22 million per paltry 30-minute episode. That's as much as Warner Brothers is spending per episode. Or, or Yeah, as much as Warner Brothers is spending per episode roughly for House of the Dragon. Uh, that is twice as long as this. And th just the cinematography, honestly, is very bland. It's, it's very basic. <laughs> Okay, God, please, please, please kill Yord. Please, for the love of all God, if you want one redeeming thing in this show that will make it even slightly better, please kill Yord. This was funny. We joked in the last episode with the Lord of the Rings shot where they were walking on the top of the ridge of the mountain and were like, all those new white Jedi guys they brought with them, you know they're all going to die. They're the red shirts from OG Star Trek. They are there to be cannon fodder. So, Captain America and his shield. I guess. I guess they can cut a tree in half. But not a Wookie. Okay. Basil. Oh God, this thing again. You're injured. Fine. Soul gave me an order. I don't want to have to subdue you, but I will. Subdue the whole show. I sense something familiar. <laughs> It's May. It's May. I can't tell them apart because there's no distinction between these two characters at all. Can we also talk about right now how stupid this fight is? Let, let's talk again. Again, the script is bad. The writing for the show. This show started with May killing a well-trained, experienced Jedi master. She is now fighting a pissant Padawan. And the Padawan is taking her to task. I, 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 you, you, you really have to turn off your brain entirely. Nay, you have to go into a coma to watch this show to try to believe anything that you're seeing right now. When you do fantasy and science fiction, you still have to have a set of rules that apply. And when you establish May as the villain of the show, which they did 
from the very first scene, making her this deadly assassin who is now getting schooled by a 13 year old trainee. I, uh, I hate this show. I just explain how you hired the people Disney that you did to create this because they are not talented people. Show your face and let you read my thoughts. Wait, what? So what Je Jedi mind reading doesn't work through a helmet now? I Maybe it is. I I'm not a deep lore expert, don't get me wrong, but there's nothing intimidating about discount Ezra Miller Sith here. Um, I think he's actually shorter than Lee Jung Jae. I, I, what, what happened to the days of Darth Maul and David Prowse and the Darth Vader outfit when the bad guys were massive and intimidating and scary? And this is, um, we got a twink. Jackie is a Jedi. She can take care of herself. I need to get you. Wait, wait, why, why, why? Again, this is ridiculous. Jackie's a, no, she's a Padawan. She's a kid. She's a student. She hasn't even graduated yet, let alone earn the rank of knight or even master. She's a student and she's fighting the assassin that you guys have been hunting that already killed three now, well, killed two, but you think it's three other Jedi Masters. Why would Yord say this here? God. Jeez. Stupid. What is he, Yord? I don't know. He doesn't follow the rules of combat. Didn't follow the rules of combat. Since when do Sith follow the rules of combat? Never mind. Oh, wait, there haven't been a Sith scene for a thousand years, a hundred years from now, but they're seeing this guy. And still, everybody forgets to mention this to the Jedi Council and the Phantom Menace. All these people have to die. This has to be like Rogue One. Everybody has to die. I mean, unless they're going to do like the ending to Sphere, where they all tell the Sphere, oh, wait, we still have the power to completely forget everything we saw. Are we going to go with the Jedi mind wipe here? What are we doing? Hermione Grange, you're going to come in and cast Obliviate on everybody? I I can't wait. Keep moving! Basil's about the most useless character on this show, and that's saying a lot. I don't even know why this character was brought in to sniff a pair of used Wookiee underwear or used Wookiee toilet paper so they could go find the Wookiee. Um, when we've introduced things like tracking fobs, and why wouldn't the Jedi know how to find? They can feel everybody else. They couldn't feel their way. Again, there's just a lot of unnecessary junk. There's a lot of filler in this. And this has long been the problem with Star Wars since Disney took it over and made it Disney Star Wars. Not legitimate Star Wars, but Disney Star Wars. The amount of filler that gets shoved into these Disney Plus Star Wars shows, and the Marvel shows for that matter, is outrageous. It's usually populated with extra junk so they can fill it out to, say, eight episodes. So they can stretch it out for advertisers and Nielsen ratings. And honestly, as bad as this show is, I'm betting that this entire show could easily be condensed down to a 90-minute film, maybe a 100-minute film. There doesn't need to be four hours worth of this stuff because there is so much crap in it. And the crap that even should stay behind to even try to make a functional story, most of that is just crap. <laughs> okay. Good for Jackie. Now explain how this same person that she just subdued in five minutes of hand-to-hand -hand violent combat was able to kill Carrie Ann Moss's character in 30 seconds in the first episode with, come at me with all your strength. I mean, I, 
<laughs> Somebody help me here. Oh, wait, you can't because the show doesn't make sense. She she took the saber. Why not have used it more? <laughs> I, she was going to cut her throat a minute ago. She had a knife to her throat, but the saber was too much. Oh, here comes Discount Ezra Miller. Please, you can learn from this bad one. Oh, God, here we go. Girl power, baby. The Padawan. Oh. So, Jackie is now Wonder Woman. So, like we predicted, dude Sith takes down, you know, five trained Jedi Knights, not Padawans insofar as we know, takes them down, little Padawan kid holding her own, right, against a trained assassin, May, and a Sith Lord, discount Ezra Miller. <laughs> Oh my God, please just kill her. Kill her. Kill her because that would make sense. You have to make this make sense. So therefore, Jackie right now has to die. That's what you've set up. If you want this person to be threatening, then you had better kill right now in this moment. Kill a major character in this show. Let's see if you do it. Nope, dude ran off. Dude ran off. Okay, so Yord is around walking when he took a lightsaber through the leg, across the leg. So, okay, that wouldn't kill him, but I would think right now uh, his leg probably wouldn't be working this well. And he'd probably be in an absolute metric crap ton of pain. But we can't explain how lightsabers work with Disney Star Wars anymore because they don't. Do it. The light attracts them. Attracts what? Oh, here we go. We got to set up the cockroach bugs. Coward. <gasps> We're going. He's going to kill them. He's going to kill them all. You think? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Did she just elbow? She just elbowed his Beskar helmet off, like broke it with her elbow. They've been hitting that thing with a lightsaber and the it, lightsaber's bouncing off of it and not doing anything. But she hit her. She hit the helmet. Ezra's helmet with her elbow and broke it. I'm pretty sure that's what I just saw. Yeah, yeah, she hit it with her elbow, and you heard it shatter. There was like a shattering glass sound. <laughs> oh, my God. Nobody is checking these scripts. Nobody is. Nobody. No! Good. Good. She needed to die. Now, that being said, there's discount Ezra Miller. We told you we knew who it was. She should have died 10 minutes ago. There's no way this Padawan chick should have made it this far. No way in hell. She was in a class with like 12 year olds. OK, this would have been like having Ahsoka when she was 12 or 13. In the very first Clone Wars movie, as a little kid, go up against Palpatine at that time, or you know another Sith Lord. It Ahsoka would have been killed in two seconds. And G, Shocky makes Shockerton its queer mirror. She was a child. Oh, don't don't assign her pronouns now, soul. You really 
didn't know it was me. No, no, she had to have known it was you. The rest of the world knew it was you. <sighs> Apparently nobody writing this show did. I have no name. But a Jedi like you might call me Sith. Okay, so there we go. He self-identifies as a Sith. He has no name except Queer Mirror, which is what he's been calling himself this whole show. But, uh, but I, I, whatever, it's fine. I'm not even trying anymore. Um, so you Jedi might call me a Sith. Again, this, this, this violates the principles of the Phantom Menace. Why risk discovery? Well, I, I did wear a mask. <laughs> but this one <gasps> went back on our deal. Killer, 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 she killer, exposed me. killer. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I swear, I am rooting for the Sith in this show. <sighs> I, I, I'll give him credit for getting rid of Yord. Um, thank God. I mean, we keep going back. Lightsabers and Kung Fu. Lightsabers and Kung Fu. This isn't very Star Wars-y right here. They're going hand to hand, and 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 they have both completely forgotten about the use of force powers here. Everybody's been force pushing each other, force floating each other, force this, force that. But okay. No, kill him. Kill him, seriously. Oh, accept it. My darkness. What have you done with yours? Uh. Okay. Still. Kill him. I, I, why not kill him right there? I mean, he just killed everybody else. He killed all the other Jedi. Uh, Soul is basically the only one left. I, I, it doesn't matter what his opinion is or what guilt you have about your past. This person is a very dangerous individual. Um, <laughs> I swear, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he goes on to actually really, you know, well, this is Plagueis later. I, God, I, I have no idea. I do not attack the unarmed. You're not, you're not attacking him. This is in defense at this point. You were in a fight to the death. You're going to stop fighting because he dropped his sword? After he murdered everyone, the Jedi are about dispensing justice and serving justice on behalf of the Republic, are they not? This is a threat. No, this is pretty easy call here. Uh, you kill the some bitch. I love you, Pat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I swear to God, if she kills him with Pip... I, I will be on the floor laughing my ass off. <laughs> he just killed like 10 Jedi single handedly. <laughs> and he can't keep a bunch of flying doodle bugs from <laughs> <laughs> come on man I imagine if we had seen something this stupid with Sidious in the prequels Why did he say that? I got nothing. What did you do? Please, Usha. I'll explain. Yes, I explain. Jedi bad. Oh, nice of you to show up, bitch. Usha. 
What have you done? The Jedi got what they deserved. Those Jedi were more my family than you ever were. Wait. Have you forgotten who we are? Wait, wait, wait. Wait. In the last episode, she does a 180 where she's like, no, you know what? I just realized I found out that Osha's still alive two episodes ago. I've suddenly changed my mind. Um, I, I, you know what? I'm going to go find the Wookiee and turn myself into the Jedi. Uh, I, yeah. And now she's back to blaming the Jedi again for being... I can't keep up. All right, so they start fighting again. They disagree. May still kind of blames the Jedi, even though she didn't blame the Jedi last episode and was going to turn herself into them. But before that, she was blaming the Jedi. So now she's back to blaming the Jedi. And uh, Osha is just there to arrest her. And now they're fighting again. And um, let's just let's get please. Let's get this over with. What? Okay. Oh, we're going to trim our hair. Oh, we're going to do that thing. Saul, are you all right? Where is she? Who? Your sister. Why not leave that a bit of a mystery? Why show the moment that may and osha switch places effectively why show the moment where may cuts her hair with the lightsaber um that's a new one um and then takes osha's place why not show it right up to the moment where they start fighting and then cut to this scene with that little interlude with discount Ezra Miller, G give the audience something to think about. Is it really OSHA? Is it really may again? There's no mystery at all anywhere in this show. Everything is spoon fed to the audience like a bunch of morons, you know, I, just there's, there's nothing here to keep you intrigued. They explain everything as they go. Uh, and just, you know, what's, what mystery is left? What did Soul really do? Who cares? Who cares? We've already been told the show is going to make you question effectively the moral legitimacy of the Jedi. So we can always already infer what's going on here. We don't, I mean, it's like we said before, every opportunity in this show so far has been a complete swing and a miss from a writing perspective. It's just that bad. Extraordinary beings we are. Did he just force heal her? Well, there you have it, kids. Um, that was Leslie Headland's favorite episode. Clearly, the standards are not that high. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.